437, 437, since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I'm saved, saved, saved. Let's all stand together as we sing 437 together. On that first together, since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I have had the joy and living both within. God is all the same and sorrow of the past. There underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Save, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more. Alright guys, it's time to wake up. Are you saved tonight? Are you glad you're saved tonight? Let's sing that second verse like we mean it, alright? Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. singing. Good to see you here tonight. Hope you had a good afternoon. Uh, we had a good morning this morning, didn't we? And uh, it's good to be at church and I uh, hope you had a good meal and a good Father's Day, those of you fathers. And uh, you heard from those who call you dad and uh, it was a good day and uh, looking forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. Let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you for the Sunday night service. Lord, for the many, many decisions that you, we each have made in our lives, and I know I've made in mine, over the years because I was in church on Sunday evening. And Lord, we pray that once again tonight you'll meet with us and speak to our hearts, bless the music, bless our time together as only you can. And Lord, may each of us leave in a little bit saying it sure was good to be in the house of the Lord today. Father, control the service is our prayer. Yes. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. <laughs>
number 334, 334. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn, still sweeter every day. 334. On that first, let's sing it together. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. He's fairer than the glory of the golden purple dawn. He's all my fancy pictures in his fairest dreams and more. Each day he grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied. This side, the golden char. Oh, there he'll be so sweeter than he ever was before. His glory broke upon me when I saw him from afar. He's fairer than the lily, brighter than the morning star. He fails and satisfies my longing spirit more and more. He'd say he grows so sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancied. This side, the golden shore. Oh, there he'll be so sweeter than he ever was before. My heart is sometimes heavy, but he comes with great relief. He pulls me to his bosom when I droop with blight and grief. I love the Christ who all my burdens in his body bore. His day he grows so sweeter and he was the day before. The half cannot be fancy. Well, let's see. We have an announcement here that says the results of the voting is in for the ladies' meeting you had on Monday. Uh, each table had to create their own version of a fruit bowl, and they made that version out of Play-Doh, I think. Is that right? How fun was that? And uh, they put those they put those on Facebook, and everybody had to go on there and vote. And uh, coming in third place was table three. Coming in second place was table two. And the winning table was table number one. <laughs> the ladies of table one were Brenda Mann, Nikki Slaybaugh, Tanya Reed, Grace Moreland, Jan Proke, Stephanie Paz, Leanne Schnapp, and Thelma Blystone. All right, congratulations, ladies. Good job. You, it looked like fruit, I guess, so that's good. And, uh, but don't try eating any of it, that's for sure, okay? All right, and uh, regular schedule now this week, Wednesday night, we'll uh, have our fourth in the series of uh, God providing His Word to every generation, and we'll talk Wednesday night about the purpose. What's the purpose of God providing His Word? to every generation and uh, don't forget then on June the 30th that's a week from Tuesday uh, we'll be going to Milford so sign up downstairs for that and uh, give a day of getting out the word of God and uh, it'll be well worth your time and that's a that's an investment uh, that you can do that'll it's the exciting thing about that is you're going to put together scriptures they're going to go somewhere else in the world and you won't know what happened to them until you get to heaven but somebody's going to come up to you and say, I got saved reading this Bible, and it's going to be one that you help put together, and uh, that'll be exciting. All right, so that'll be on uh, Tuesday the 30th. We'll go down to Milford for that, and so please keep that in mind as well. And then the sign-up for the picnic, I think, is down there, and uh, follow the directions for that, okay? And we'll have a look forward to a good time together on the 4th of July. Okay. I think that's all I got. Lori, good to see you tonight. Lori Myers in town. We get to trade one sister for another, huh? And uh, good to see you tonight. Uh, come in to spend some time with Grandma. Good, good. I'm glad to, glad you did. And good to see you here tonight. All right. And uh, anybody here tonight for the first time? We can find out who you are and where you're from. Any first timers? All right. And uh, Rick and Kylie. Rick and Kylie are right here. Put your hand up, Brother Rick. And uh, these, this couple been coming for a while. And uh, Rick uh, is a, are you a, a professor? 
down at uh, Campbell's, is it? Campbellsville University, Campbellsville, Kentucky. And um, he uh, and Kylie, when we first met them, were just uh, an item, but uh, they are now a couple. And uh, they got married how many weeks? Three weeks ago now? Three weeks ago, all right. So they're married. <clears throat> and uh, that's the good news. The bad news is they're going back to Kentucky. And uh, <laughs> so we won't see them as often as what we've been seeing them. And uh, I think this is the week you're officially moving down. Is that right? Okay. All right. So uh, if you're ever in Campbellsville, Kentucky, look them up. And uh, but if uh, hopefully his your mom still lives not far from here, doesn't she? Your folks are in Northwest, okay. So hopefully we'll get to see him occasionally when he comes up to visit them. We'll get to stop in and uh, hope you stop in and see us. But uh, make sure you say goodbye to them, and uh, you've sure been a blessing to us. It's been great to have you with us, and uh, we uh, we'll pray the best for you guys as you move on to serve the Lord there. All right, God bless you. All right, it is Father's Day still. And so we want all the men, doesn't matter if you're a father or not, if you're a man, uh, come on up into the choir. We're going to sing a song tonight, all right? So let's fill the choir loft with all the men, teenagers included. We'll let you come up. Bring your Bible with you. Bring your Bible with you, fellas, okay? Bring your Bible with you. Bring your songbook. Well, no, there's songbooks up here. There's songbooks up here. You won't need a song, but bring your Bible, though, all right? Bob's going to lead us in, Hold the Fort, for I am coming. It's 244 in the book, fellas, 244. That's great. All righty. Turn to number 246 while the men take their seats. 246, I'm pressing on the upward way. 
new heights I'm gaining every day. Higher ground, let's sing that together on the first. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. The higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. The higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. That's great. Well, who can cheer the heart like Jesus? Nobody can. Let's turn over and sing about that. 539, 539, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. When you find that, would you stand with me as we sing? Let's sing that first all together. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus by his presence all divine? True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see love of Christ so freely given grace of God beyond degree mercy higher than the heaven deeper than the deepest sea that third what a wonderful redemption never can a mortal know how my sin though red like crimson can be whiter than the snow all oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
need his hand supplying every good in him I see on his strength divine relying is all in all to me all oh, that thrilled my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see Let's sing that last together. By the crystal flowing river, with the ransomed I will sing, and forever and forever praise and glorify the King. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see all right good singing you can be seated and the ushers will come and we'll get our offering now this evening be prepared to give as God has blessed and prospered you and uh, be faithful in your giving right through the summertime and uh we ask the Lord to take care of the needs that we have here at the church, all right? Let's pray, and we'll ask God's blessing on the offering tonight. I'll have Brother Taylor lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for this great day that you've made. And thank you for being here with us, Lord, in the midst, as you promised, Lord. Others, this offering is taken up now. And the tithes are here and the offerings, Lord. Let, uh, let not one of us be accused of being a thief from you, Lord. And give what we owe to you, what's yours already. Let each one of us give the offering above that, Lord, that you have also prospered us with. Bless it, Lord. And may everything that's said and done tonight be pleasing in your sight. Be with the pastor as he opens up your word. Minister to us, Lord, as we know it will, and help us to be attentive and listen to what the Lord has for us. We ask for your blessings, all this, give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible this evening and go to the book of Acts, if you would please. Acts chapter 9 for our scripture reading tonight. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 10 through 18. Verses 10 through 18 of Acts chapter 9. And we're reading responsibly, as we normally do. And also, as is our custom, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on verse 10 of Acts chapter 9. Ready? And there was a certain disciple at Damascus 
named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost." And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And let's pray together. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the Scripture here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you again for preserving your word for us, that we may hold copies of it in our hand tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to prepare our hearts to be receptive to the Word of God. Uh, help us through the special tonight, Lord, to focus our attention and our thoughts upon you, that we might hear the still, small voice of the Spirit of God. Bless the special to that end, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. grace that he gave unworthy to hold to his hand amazed that a king would reach down to a slave this love I cannot understand unworthy And now by His grace, 
His mercy has made me His own. Unworthy, unworthy, a beggar in bondage and alone. But He made me worthy, and now by His grace, His mercy has made me his own. Now, Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, again for the privilege we have to gather together here and to look into your Word. And Lord, I pray you'll help me this evening as I bring this message and we look into your word once again that the word of God will accomplish uh, that which you desire it to accomplish in each one of our lives. And the Lord, each of us will give our careful attention to the only book you've ever written. Lord, I simply ask you to have your will and your way in these next few moments that we spend in your word. Give me thy help as I bring the message and give the people help as they listen. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> Most of us know, in Acts chapter 9, most of us know all about Saul, who, of course, later would become Paul, the great Apostle Paul, writer of half the New Testament, and planted many churches and became, outside of the Lord Jesus himself, maybe one of the greatest Christians that ever walked the face of the earth. But you know, tonight I want us to focus not on Saul, but on someone else who, the truthfully, was very instrumental in Saul getting started. It's a fellow named Ananias. <clears throat> and he made a great contribution to the work of God, and it wasn't an easy one in the position that he was placed in. Let me ask you a question tonight, and, and be honest, okay? How many of you like to be comfortable? Okay? Yeah, I mean... If you're honest, you say, yeah. <clears throat> and whether, uh, whether it's a place you feel most comfortable, whether it's a, uh, uh, there, there might be a certain place at home, you have a certain seat you like to be in, or a recliner you like to get to, or for some of you it might be your bed, uh, but you have a place where uh, that's where you just feel comfortable. And I think it's safe to say we all like that. We all like to be comfortable. But I'm going to share with you something tonight that some of you know, and maybe for some of you it'll just be a reminder, but it's a great truth of Christianity, and that is God is not concerned about your comfort. Okay? God is not concerned how comfortable we are, or how comfortable we want to be. God has not called us to be comfortable serving Him. All right? He's not, that's not the supreme uh, concern of God. He's not called us to comfort. He has called us to obedience to Him. He's called us to be obedient servants of Jesus Christ. And I'll guarantee you, when you decide to be an obedient servant of Jesus Christ, you will not be comfortable. Okay? It will stretch you uh, outside of your comfort zone. Now, Paul will know, Saul who becomes Paul, uh, he'll know what it's like uh, to be uncomfortable serving God. And, and you, you read 2 Corinthians 11 when he talks about his list of things that he went through uh, for God. In fact, look there for a moment. Would you hold your finger there in Acts 9? We're going to come back to that. But I want you to look over at 2 Corinthians in chapter 11 where Paul begins to say a little bit about what he's been through as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says in verse 23 of chapter 11, notice, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, 
in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Now, uh, you read that, that doesn't sound like a very comfortable life, does it? Uh, you don't think of any of those words when it comes to being comfortable. And so Paul was going to know what it's like to serve God and what it's like to be uncomfortable. You know, there's, there's so many Christians when they understand the call of God to follow Jesus Christ and to be a witness for Jesus Christ, and you say the command of Jesus to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature is for every single believer, you get the response, well, I'm not comfortable doing that. Okay? And that's not an excuse. That's one that is not on the, the list that is, that is acceptable at all uh, to get you out of the command of God. In fact, there'd be some of you sitting here tonight, I'm sure, that if I said, hey, I need you here Saturday morning, to, to going to give you some calls to make to go out and to give the gospel to some people, you would say, well, I'm not comfortable with that. And, and you would use the comfort zone as your excuse. And, and listen, it's not a matter of whether we're comfortable or not. God calls all believers to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not a suggestion. It is not just a, something that would be nice to do. It is a command of God. And we obey it whether it's comfortable or not to obey it. Jesus told the disciples, You'll be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. And it doesn't matter how comfortable that makes us or uncomfortable that makes us it matters that we obey his command and I'll guarantee you as we obey his command it will at first seem uncomfortable but pretty soon it will be the normal thing for us to do God calls us to serve as a witness on our job God calls to service as a witness in our schools and in our community and yet sadly many are not willing to be a witness Men are not willing to go on a mission trip. Men are not willing for God to call them to go to another field, to go across an ocean, to go to another country. Somebody say, uh, well, that's great for the Moorlands to go to uh, Central Asia, and that's great for Knickerbocker to go to Nepal, or that's great for uh, these folks to go to Brazil. The, the, but, but listen, uh, you know, I, 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 I just like it where I am. Why do you like it where you are? You're comfortable. You're comfortable. You have to be willing for God to take you out of your comfort zone. Willing for God to take you out of the comfortable place. The safe place. And God, if God calls you to get out of the comfort zone, are you willing to listen? Are you willing to listen to what He says? I want to give you a little background of the passage, and most of you are familiar with this passage here in Acts chapter 9. Saul has been commissioned by the high priest to follow the people of this way, which is what they were known as as Christians, and to follow them all the way into the, a city called Damascus, where he could had authority to arrest them and to put them in prison, and to put them in stocks. And he was on his way to the city of Damascus when his trip got interrupted. And his trip got interrupted by a meeting with Jesus Christ himself. The Bible says uh, about noon he was struck with a light that shone above the brightness of the sun. And I don't know about you, there's only one light that I know of that shines brighter than the sun in the sky. And that's Jesus Christ himself. For he is the light of the world. And Jesus spoke to him, and you know the story how he accepted the Lord as his Savior that day and said, What wilt thou have me to do? And of course, he's taken to a house, and he's waiting in the house, and Saul has been blinded by this encounter. And he's waiting for further instructions in the house, blind. But while he's sitting there waiting for instructions across town in another house, God is speaking to someone else. And he's speaking to a man named Ananias. And he's telling Ananias the story about Saul. And 
he is telling Ananias, I want you to uh, go and meet this fellow named Saul and talk to him, and I'm going to tell you that story a little bit this evening as we focus on Ananias. I want you to know, first of all, he was ready to hear God's call. He was ready to hear God's call. Calls him by name. And by the way, that's always, that's always, it's always an amazing thing in the Bible when God calls somebody, He calls them by name. Did you know God knows your name? You remember what Jesus said in John chapter 10? My sheep know my voice. And He says, and I call them by name. He knows our name. I guess, you know what, if God can, the Bible says he, he put all the stars in place and He calls the stars by name and there's billions and billions and trillions and gazillions and I don't know how much higher I can go, but it, it, you know, there's so many stars. Huh? And he, he gives every one of them a name. I don't think He has any problem remembering our name. But God's a personal God and He calls Him by name. And He's saying, Ananias, you saw that in verse number 10, and He says, I am here, Lord. I am here, Lord. This is, this is Ananias' mission now. That God's about to ask him to do something that he's not going to be real comfortable doing. Okay? Going to take him out of his comfort zone. And, 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 and I want you to see, it's not about the circumstances. It's always about willingness. It's always about willingness. You don't Listen, don't, don't tell God, all right, God, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you if you call me, but but I want to go to this country. I want to go to that country. And by the way, you say, preacher, does that really happen? Yeah, that happens too much. That's why we send, listen to me, we send over 87% of our missionaries to 22 countries of the world. Nearly 90% of our missionaries we send out of America go to 21 countries of the world. And 10% for all the others. And i got to believe that's because some folks are laying stipulations on, okay, God, I'll go, but here's where I'll go. Because anywhere else would be uncomfortable for me. And they don't want to get out of the comfort zone. But Ananias was ready to hear from the Lord. When the Lord said, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Ready to hear what God wanted to say to him. Are you ready to hear what God would want to say to you? Are you, are, you, are you ready to hear if God would call you? And I believe he was ready to hear because of his response. He said, I am here, Lord. Like, like, like Isaiah, when he heard the Lord say, Who shall I send and who will go for me? And, and Isaiah said, I will, Lord, here am I. I'll go. Did you know? Did you know God will even take volunteers? Did you know that? Say, so God will take a volunteer. Eager to go. One of the greatest writers and preachers of the 20th century was Dr. John R. Rice. Began the sword of the Lord in 1934. Went home to be with the Lord in 1980. Over the period of of uh, nearly 50 years of ministry, wrote many books and, and edited papers, a great soul winner, a great preacher. And, and listen, how did he start the ministry? He went up to the, he was at the University of Chicago. I think he was teaching there, English or speech or debate or something. And, and he went over to the Pacific Garden Mission, the famous Pacific Garden Mission where Billy Sunday was saved and others there in Chicago. And he led a man to Christ. And uh, fellow got saved and he was encouraged and uh, Dr. I said I went back the next night and that fellow came back and he had gone out and bought himself a suit and a tie and he was in the service you know what he said he said God I think I'd like to do this full time so he quit teaching and went into being an evangelist for God what did he do he volunteered and God accepted a volunteer just like he did with Isaiah and I think Ananias was that way I think Ananias was eager to do whatever God wanted him to do. Now he understood, listen, he understood that this was a, this is a fellow that everybody in the church had heard of. They, they understood that he was the enemy. And they understood what he was in Damascus to do. And, and, and he, was, he was understanding uh, what the plan was. And, and, and the one who he 
but yet the one who he worshipped and the one who he loved, the one who Ananias loved, is now calling on him to do something for him. You understand, once you're saved, God will call you to do something for him. Once you're saved, God will call you to do something for him. Are you willing to listen to what God wants you to do? Hey, are you anticipating God calling you to do something with your life? Do you, do you look for the Lord to call you to do something for Him? Or would you rather not listen? Ananias was willing to hear the call of God. And I think he made it plain that he's available. He made it plain I'm available because here I am. Here I am, Lord. Much like Samuel would have said, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. I think he had a willing obedience to the Lord. I think he was eager to do whatever it was God wanted him to do. And so I think when we look at Ananias, we think that here's a man who, who was eager to, to when God needed to, when God saved Saul and he says, Okay, now who can I pick? that'll go to him and do what I ask him to do, Ananias came to his mind. And he knew Ananias would be willing to obey what God's telling him to do. And I think he was ready to obey. In humble submission, he said, I am here, Lord. I am here, Lord. The question is, are you ready to hear from God? Are you ready to respond to him if he calls you? How can you hear from God? Well, you hear from Him, first of all, through the Word of God. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning, how this is the book that gives you understanding. This is the book where God is going to speak to your heart. That's why you want to read the Word of God and be in the Word of God and, and, and prepare your heart to listen to God's Word as He speaks to you. It's not just, listen, it's not just words on a page. This is different than any other book you'll read. This is alive. This is powerful. This is written not just to inform you, it's written to transform you. And it's the only book that has the power to do that. And so you want to read God's Word and allow Him to speak to your heart. You can do it through prayer and meditating on the Word of God. That's, that's in your community. When you communicate with someone, it's not a one-sided conversation. It's a two-sided, it's a dialogue. And so you communicate with God. So when we read His Word and, and we meditate on His Word, God speaks to our heart. But when we pray, we talk to God. And we communicate back and forth. And that's what God desires. And that's when God reveals His will to us. And that's when we'll hear from God. And, and we, we communicate on that level. And so we open our hearts and our mind to God, and then He speaks to us. And then when you hear from God, when you know that God impressed something on your heart, what's your reaction? Hmm? Is it obedience? Or is it, well, wait a minute, God. What are you telling me to do? Are you, are you eager to obey? Are you eager to listen? Sometimes we hear it, but we don't listen to it. Did you know there's a difference when somebody says, I heard what you said, and someone says, I listened to what you said? There's a difference between hearing and listening. And I believe Ananias didn't just hear what the Lord said. I think he listened to God's instructions. It may seem like the same thing, but I think there's a difference. There's some people in the room tonight, you've heard God speak to you. But have you listened to God speak to you? Have you listened to what He's asking you to do? And are you ready to listen? You see, God gave Ananias some pretty specific instructions. He told him, you're going to go down in verse 11 to a street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. That's pretty specific instructions. 
what street you're supposed to be on, what house you're supposed to stop at, the name of the guy you're going to talk to, and what he's doing when you go talk to him. That's all pretty plain. He was ready to hear God's voice, and he was willing to listen to God's voice. And he doesn't, he's not, by the way, he's, 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 he's not questioning, I don't think, in, a, in the way of doubting. I believe he's questioning to make sure he had the instructions correct. I, do I really understand what you're telling me here to do? Because he said, Lord, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. And the Lord simply said, Go thy way. And he said, He's a chosen vessel unto thee to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Was he... Was he doubting what God wanted him to do? No. Let me ask you a question. Do I think he was fearful a little bit? Yeah. Sure. I think he was, he, he, he obviously had some fear. Hey, let me ask you a question. Don't you think when God calls somebody to do a work for him that fear isn't involved? Absolutely. You ask, you, you we were talking to uh I was listening to Brother Cleghorn. Remember uh, Tim and Clara, Kara Cleghorn. They're getting ready to go over to China. And, and the remote part of the, the, the city they're going to, uh, they had last year had two foreigners in it. This year they have none. They kicked those two out. And, and why? You're excited and you're, you're eager to go and now it's down to about a week to go and frankly, he had to admit I'm a little scared. I'm taking my wife and my year-old baby. It's not even a year-old. How old is their baby? Is he a year? This month is a year. Yeah, about a year old. And all of a sudden, the fear, the fear can grip you. Just like it did Ananias. And by the way, just like to a lesser degree, it can when, when you, you grab a fistful of tracks and you say, okay, I'm going to go out and knock on some doors and try to tell people about Jesus. There, there's a natural fear that comes in everyone, every human being. But let's not judge his fear. And just because he's fearful doesn't mean, I don't think it means he was resistant to the call of God. Fear, listen, fear doesn't disqualify you from being obedient to the call of God. Fear is not an excuse either. He doesn't allow the fear to paralyze him. Instead, we see great courage in his part and great faith in the face of his fear. A lot of times people don't obey God and do what God they know God is calling them to do because they're afraid. But I'm reminded of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and I think it's verse number 7 that says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So if I have a spirit of fear, did it come from God? No. Well, who did it come from? It comes from Satan, or it comes from self. But it didn't come from God. And so, do I act on my fear, or do I act on my faith in God? Which should it be? Faith in God. Every time. All right, Brother Jarvis? Amen. It was one of the most frustrating times, I think, for the ministry of Bearing Precious Seed there in El Paso is when there was all kinds of bad press and media coverage on Juarez. And people were afraid. And they let fear guide their decisions instead of faith in God. And people would, 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 would not go to Mexico and not take the gospel to people and, and every, every summer, I mean, those trips, I think, I'm thinking of the week we went, I think there were two or three hundred saved. And that multiplies by eight or ten weeks out of the summer. And you decide that I'm not going to go for a few weeks. I wonder, how many, I wonder how many hundreds of folks may be in hell because people were paralyzed by fear and didn't go preach the gospel. God forgive us for being fearful. 
See, Paul, he wrote that verse to Timothy who's a young preacher and saying, Timothy, fear is never going to be an option that you can opt out of being obedient to God. You cannot let fear paralyze what God has called you to do. You're called to serve. And when God calls us to serve, hey, it supersedes our fears and it supersedes our doubts and it supersedes our apprehensions and we say, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Ananias wanted to hear from Jesus. He wanted to listen and heed the calling of Jesus and he wanted to obey Jesus. He wanted to obey Jesus. Notice verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, I love this, don't you? What did he call him? Brother Saul. Wait a minute, he'd only been saved three days. How do you know if he's genuine? Uh -huh. The Lord sent him and he made his profession of faith. What, what great faith and great courage Ananias showed. He didn't let his fear diminish his obedience. He went ahead and obeyed anyway. He went ahead and did what God told him to do anyway. When you're focused on your obedience to God, fear goes to the background. When you're focused on your obedience to God, fear goes to the background. Obey God. Courage is never the absence of fear. It's the ability to do what you need to do in spite of the fear. Don't ever look at somebody and say, man, I, I just, I wish I had there. I'm just afraid. You know what? They're afraid too. But they're doing it anyway. You just move on and you press on in spite of your fears or in spite of your doubts. And overcoming fear when it comes to obeying Christ is based on your trust in Jesus Christ. You've heard me use that illustration before about, you know, setting the little child up on the edge of the piano or the counter and saying, now, now jump to daddy. And what, what, what overcomes them at first? Fear. They know they're scared to, to just leap. They're not so sure, they don't have enough trust that you're going to catch them. But you finally encourage them to overcome their fear and to jump to you, and they do, and you catch them, and they think that's great. And the next time you put them up there, it's easier to get them to jump, and pretty soon, as soon as you set them up there, you better be ready. Because they're jumping. What happened? Their trust has overcome their fear. And that's why, and that's why it's so, it was so you know, I, I use, think about Brother Jarvis with the mission trips, you know. Hey, he's seen God throw the fear away so many times when they just went by faith and said, we're going anyway. It doesn't matter what the clouds look like. doesn't matter what the storm says. doesn't matter what the weather service says. doesn't matter what the media is saying. This is what God wants us to do. We're doing it. And he saw God throw that fear in the background so many times. It is difficult when people keep their fear up to the front and throw faith to the background. Listen, that's, let's not live that way. Don't live your Christian life that way. Be obedient to God and whatever He calls you to do and whatever fear that the enemy places in you, exercise your faith and you'll find that fear will diminish as you exercise your faith. The calling for Ananias from Christ was not complicated, but it was a bit intimidating to have to go face Saul and put his hands upon Saul. But we do know what he asked him to do was tremendously important. He was called to reach out to Saul. You think If you think that was easy, remember, by the way, he did what he did. Saul got baptized, was filled with the Spirit of God, and they got him out of Damascus and sent him back to Jerusalem, and the disciples just embraced him with open arms. No, they didn't. The disciples wouldn't have anything to do with them. 
You think it was easy what Ananias did? It's something that Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and name all 12 of them, they, they wouldn't do it. Ananias did. He did. Barnabas did. Barnabas gave him the right hand of fellowship and called him Brother Saul. Listen, Ananias was ready to hear. He was ready for Jesus' instructions. He was ready to obey the Lord Jesus. We should all be willing not only to hear, but to listen to his instruction and then willing to obey what he tells us to do. God may have another Saul. God may have somebody who's going to do much greater things. Hey, Saul went on to do, Paul went on to do much greater things than we ever know Ananias did. But Ananias had a pretty important role in getting him started. You don't know who it is that you may go out and you say, man, I'm fearful. Yeah, but you're going to overcome the fear and you'll go out and knock on a door. You'll go out and visit a bus route and you'll, you'll get a hold of some young boy or some young girl. And you don't know what God will do with their life. God may use you to reach them for Christ. I think he trusted when everything in his body told him not to. And that's what you do. You trust God and do what he says even when everything in your flesh says don't do it. You ever been that way? You ever, you ever really battled your flesh about coming to church? Didn't feel like going? And you just say, man, you know what? I know it's the right thing to do, and I'm going to go. And, and then God had something for you during that service. And you walk out the door and say, well, I'm sure glad I went tonight. I'm sure glad I made myself go. By the way, that's something helpful for new Christians. When, when you feel that pressure and that, that pressure not to go to church, that's when you've got to determine that you're going to go no matter what. If the devil's working on you that hard to keep you away from that service, there must be something there that God wants you to have. But God's called us to leave our comfort zone and step out of that comfort zone by trusting Him and allowing Him to use you as His instrument. You ever, you ever think about Ananias? when he would hear of the things that Saul had done, the churches had been started, the people had been saved. When, when maybe if the Lord tarried, and, and I don't know how long Ananias lived, but if he, if he lived uh, to, to, to see some of the first uh, scrolls of the New Testament penned by the Apostle Paul, and no, that's the guy I laid hands on. God, God had me lay hands on him and he received his sight and was filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. Do you ever think he, he, he just thought, I'm glad I was obedient? You ever think, you ever think that D.L. Moody's Sunday school teacher was glad he went out and made sure all the boys in his class were saved? Huh. And there was a D.L. Moody. Think about that. Will you... Are you, are you willing to step out of your comfort zone and be out on a Saturday and give the gospel to people? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone and help on the bus route? Say, well, I'll, I'll help get some kids to church. Are you willing? Are you, are you willing to listen to God call you to do that? Or will you step out of your comfort zone? And by the way, it's not comfortable. That's, that's, here's, here's Brother Linky and his wife with two small boys. You think it's comfortable to get up and be here at church by 7.45 on Sunday morning? I think it's comfortable to uh, many Sunday afternoons spend the whole afternoon here, not go home. Then, then do what they do Sunday evening. And get, then get home late Sunday night. That's not comfortable. Will you step out of your comfort zone and be involved in Sunday school? Great, great wonders don't happen 
when we're at ease in Zion. Churches, churches end up dying because they get comfortable. We got a, hey, we got a building, we got people, we got bills paid, we're good. No, comfort isn't what God's called us to. We have to be continually listening to what God wants us to do. Because He will continue to challenge us. Hey, it may not be, some of you tonight, it may not be just a bus route. It may not be just to get out and go soul winning. It may not be a Sunday school class. It may not be involved in some ministry. It may be God's calling you to be a missionary. God's calling you to go to one of those restricted countries. God's calling you to go not to one of the 21 countries that 90% of the other people are going to. I'm saying He's calling you to go into the, the field where the laborers are not going. To go into a harvest where no one's going to reap a harvest. Where the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And what has been holding you back is only your fear. And whether it's a fear of I don't I don't know how it'll happen. I don't know what about what about my house? What about my children? What about this? And you have all these things you're fearful about. But I'm asking you tonight, step out of your comfort zone. Act on your faith. And God will take care of the fears. I related to you, Brother Knickerbocker's father, who I met a few weeks ago, Tom Knickerbocker. He's with a ministry. I told you about the two national pastors he had with him. One from the Philippines, who's a missionary in Cambodia. The other one was from Barbados, and he's a missionary in Bolivia. And he, his, what his ministry is, is with a group that just helps these national pastors. And he really tries to get them support. I think, I think it was, I think it's like $50 would support like five pastors. For a month. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how much less it is for these national pastors to be able to, to, to live on. And by the way, partially that's because they're not Americans. And most of the world lives on a lot less than what we live on. Just, just a fact. But, but he was talking about how he was riding his tractor, mowing his yard, and, and really God's been dealing with him about leaving the pastorate and, and going to work with national pastors, and particularly in Africa. And he said, I'm, I'm, you know, and by the way, fearful. Why? I'm, I'm comfortable here. But he's driving the tractor, and finally he said, riding the tractor, I just said, okay, God. He said, I'm just riding along. Okay, God. <clears throat> he said, if you want me to go to Africa, though, he said, you have to pay for everything because I don't have any money. And he said, I made the turn on the tractor, and as I started back down the other way, a truck pulled in my driveway. He said, and I stopped the tractor. And he said, a, a businesswoman got out of that truck, walked over to my tractor, and said, Pastor, you're going to Africa. I couldn't believe it. She said, that fast? That fast. She had, said, I just came from the bank and something about a card and miles, airline miles, and she had 80,000 airline miles. And she says, you're going, it's all paid for. Okay. Then he said, my next fear was, he said, by, 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 by surrendering all, he said, I had a house to pay. He said, I still owed on my house. How am I gonna how am I gonna surrender and go there? He said, no salary, no guaranteed income, just just God. And he was fearful. But he said, I obeyed what God told me to do. Went to Africa, came home, gave his resignation, and stepped out by faith. He said, within one year. He said, our house was sold, completely paid off, and I paid cash for a condominium that we base out of when I'm, when I'm, not, when I'm at home. He said, Brother Jarvis, he said, if I'd have known God paid this well, I'd have quit my salary years ago. 
Amen. But the Jarvis knows what that's like. And, and listen, uh, what is it? He put the faith and the action and the fears went in the background. I'm telling you, God will take care of you. Just listen to his call. Do what God wants you to do. But it'll, you'll never see those wonders. You'll never see those things happen if you're not obedient. If you don't get out of your comfort zone, then we never see those things take place. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Help us to be willing to listen to your call and obey the call and see the wonders of what obedience to God can do. Thank you for Ananias. Thank you that when you reached down and saved Saul, you had a Christian that you knew you could go to who would listen. Not just hear what you say, but listen to what you say. And who would obey what you tell them to do. And Lord, I believe there's folks in this room tonight who, as you look down and you see the needs of the world, you see the needs in our church, you see the needs of our community, and Lord, you know there's people here that you can speak to. I pray they'll hear, they'll listen, and they will obey. And they'll see the wonders of God. And they'll see your marvelous works. Father, please, don't let us ever get comfortable here at Bible Baptist Church. We don't want to be in a comfort zone. We always want to be obedient to you. We always want to be operating on our faith in you, not our fears. And so help us to be people, men and women of faith and obedience to our God. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed this evening. I'll finish this prayer in just a moment. But I wonder how many folks tonight first would just say this, Pastor, I'm willing to leave my comfort zone. God calls me. I'm listening. If that's what God wants, I'm willing to leave my comfort zone and do what God wants me to do. Will you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me tonight? Before God, that's me. I'm willing to do that tonight. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. The second question tonight is, if you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I believe God has spoken to me. I have listened. And I need to obey what God's telling me to do. You can be honest and say, I've been fearful. I've been afraid to, to, to respond and to obey. But tonight, God has showed me I need to operate on my faith and not my fear. And you would say, Pastor, pray with me that I'll step out by faith. And it may be to a foreign field. It may be that you'll come out on Saturday and you'll begin to witness, give others the gospel. It may be helping on the bus route. It may be a Sunday school class. I don't know what it is that the Lord is, is speaking to your heart about, but you're saying, I'm listening, and Pastor, I want to obey. I just pray with me that I'll operate on faith and not on fear. Pastor, pray for me this evening. Would you slip your hand up tonight? Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. Now, if God has spoken to your heart this evening, I want you to use the altar and pray. And it might just be to come down and say, God, I'm willing to leave my comfort zone. I'm listening to what you want me to do. 
All you have to say is what Ananias said is, Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Awaiting further instructions. If you're here tonight and you just need to operate by faith and not by fear, then why don't you take the first step of faith? That would be to come down during the invitation and shake my hand and say, Tell me what the Lord wants you to do. And I'll pray with you about it tonight. And maybe we ought to announce it to the church what God has called you to do. That's the first step of faith. And God will honor your faith. He always honors faith. It pleases Him when we operate by faith. Whatever it is that God's dealing with you about now, respond to Him this evening. Heavenly Father, thank You for dealing with hearts tonight. And I pray, Lord, in these next few moments that holy decisions would be made for you would affect people's lives here in our city, in our community, in our state, our country, around the world. It could affect lives for eternity. May your people hear, may they listen, may they obey what you're telling them to do. I pray for these who are fearful. May they operate on their faith, their trust in you. May their complete trust in you overwhelm their fear. And may they obey you this evening. Have your own way now, Lord, in each heart and life. And I'll thank you for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart. You respond to him this evening now, will you? Search me, O oh God. That's right. And know my heart today. Amen. Try me, O oh Savior. <laughs> know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin. Fulfill thy word and make me pure within fill me with fire where once I burn with shame grant my desire to magnify thy name Lord, take my life and make it wholly thine. Fill my poor heart with thy great love divine. Take all my will, my passion, self, and pride I now surrender Lord in me abide O Holy Ghost revival comes from thee send a Start the work in me. Thy word declares thou wilt supply our need. For blessing now, O Lord, I humbly 
Just wait for a minute, if you would. You know, I read a saying once that said, the greatness of a church is not determined by how many it seats, but by how many it sends. I'm asking God to use our church to be a sending station for Him. That this will be a place that He can use, that He'll bring folks into our church that we might send them out to do the work of God. And I'm asking God that. You just ought to know that, I guess. That, that's, that's my prayer. And so it's, listen, that we have to understand that's what it's all about. It's not just for us to, to, uh, get, get, to get bigger, bigger, and bigger. Bigger is, is not a big deal with God. Getting the gospel to people is a big deal with God. Getting laborers into the harvest is the big deal with God. He didn't say, uh, he didn't look at the fields went into harvest and say, hey, pray you can get a big church. He said, pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth labors into his harvest. So let's, let's be obedient to him. Somebody who, got to be somebody somewhere. There got to be some young people somewhere that says, I don't want to be comfortable. I want to do something big for God. I want God to use me in a big way. Oh, I pray some of the young people would get a fire in their soul to do something great for God. I'm praying you will. I'm praying God will do a work in your heart. Let's bow together, shall we? Father, thank you for the wonderful day today. Thank you, Lord, for people who are responsive to your word, to the leading and the speaking of the Holy Spirit of God as he speaks to our heart, as the word of God is brought forth. Thank you for holy decisions that have been made here morning and evening. And I pray, Lord, those who are, you are speaking to and they're endeavoring to listen, you will help them to be obedient to what you're calling them to do. And Lord, allow us here at Bible Baptist Church to be a sending station for thee. Lord, we'd love to see you do great wonders and great things in our midst. But we understand that means we won't be comfortable. We'll always be challenged to rely on our faith and our trust in you and not our fears. But Lord, remind us, please, over and over again that without faith it's impossible to please God. And so help us to walk by faith and not by sight. We love you. We thank you for a wonderful day today in the house of God. Lord, I pray Rick and Kylie as they leave, give them safety this week as they travel down and they get things established and set up there in Kentucky. Put your hand of blessing upon this young couple. Use them. Use them for your glory and for your honor. Lord, dismiss us all with your care now. Make us mindful that you go with us as we leave this place tonight. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. We love you. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.